Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Melissa if you're new here and for today's video this is going to be part two of my houseplant tour. And part two is just going to be over the equipment, the lights, anything that I'm using for my setup. I'm going to give you a closer look into how I set it up and how I'm like running this plant room basically. If you missed part one, part one, I showed you every plant of my collection. So I will link that video up here if you have not seen it. It is pretty recent, I just filmed it. So part one was just the plants and this is just going to be a closer look at how I set everything up. And if you need links to anything, definitely let me know. I will have as much linked as I can down below as well in the description box. So you can find links to everything down there. And as well as my Amazon, I do buy and purchase a lot of stuff from Amazon. Amazon is just really convenient for me and I do a shop often on Amazon. So a lot of plant tea products and stuff I do get on Amazon. But if you have any questions, definitely let me know. So I'm gonna give you a closer look at my setup. I think I will start on this side. You're gonna notice these white cube shelves. I have two that are connected on this side and then I have there's one in the middle that's a little bit bigger and then there's also another one on the end so I technically have four shelves and this one in the middle is different the cubes are larger and this one I did get in store at Target they actually have a lot of cube shelves if you're looking for some I do recommend going to Target and checking some of those out these ones are thinner like they're not as wide and I think they're just maybe a little bit taller. So I do prefer these ones because they don't stand out as much. So these ones I did get off Amazon and I can link those down below. I think they were only $21 a piece, which wasn't bad. And this one here in the middle is a little bit bigger so I can kind of fit some cat beds and stuff in the bottom of that one. And this is Chai, he has joined me for this video cause he hears me in here talking. So you might hear some kitty purr purrs in this video. So here's another look at the shelves. And I did put some plastic like vinyl over top to protect the wood. This you can get like in the kitchen aisle. This is just like drawer cover. I do have some of my Amazon I can link for you as well, but this is a new thing that I recently added because my moss poles were dripping water and it was basically like ruining the material of these shelves and it was staining and it can mold. So I do recommend if you are gonna use these for poles to add some kind of liner down because it helps with cleanup too. And I think it just makes it a little bit easier. I wish I had done that sooner because I did damage one of the pieces of wood. So I kind of like flipped it and reversed it. But yeah, I love these. I think they're convenient and it elevates them up off the floor so that, you know, the kitty cats here can't really get to these plants as as much they could probably jump up there if they really wanted to but they honestly don't pay any attention to the plants that are up there next i'm going to talk about these lights here so these are plant spectrum grow lights they're by mother life official they are the 32 inch so they're pretty tall and i believe the wattage is a 32 watt as well these plant spectrum lights are really easy to set up it has a base here that you screw on to the bottom and it just stands and I think it's really, really nice. It does have the cord. It comes with like an on off toggle switch, but I don't use the cord because I do have this grow light set up on a timer and I will show you like my outlet setup and everything for my lights. So this one here is exactly the same as this one here. And then I have this one set up in a different outlet timer there. But I just think these lights are amazing and it provides my plants with enough light. I definitely recommend if you are going to do moss poles to, if you don't have a window that you can place them in front of, I would recommend investing in one of these plant spectrum lights. I honestly think they're worth it. And I think they're amazing lights. I've had mine here for probably like five months and I think my plants have responded really well to it. And this one is the newest one that I did get. So this one I've only had for maybe a couple weeks, but I love them and I do recommend them. Here's a closer look at the table. I just got these off Amazon not that long ago. These wood legs just screw into the back 
and I think it's like a pretty nice little table to house these plant spectrum lights. Back here behind my poles, you can see these outlet plugs. These are actually connected through your Wi-Fi, so it's just one plug and you can download an app on your phone that will, um, you can control basically the timer, how long you want them to run for, the time that you want them to start and go off. I do like these, they're like by the company Blink, I think. The only downfall is that they're only one plug. So if you have multiple lights and you don't have enough like outlet space, I would recommend the other timer that I'm going to show you for my other setups. But these ones are nice for like a single light that you want to come on and off with. I'm gonna stand kind of somewhat far away so that these grow lights don't completely blind you. The sun is out today and it is making my space very backlit <laughs> because it is very bright coming in. So this light over here, I've had set up for a while. And this one here, I had set up on the opposite wall. This one is a Sansi bulb, it's a 36 watt. And I have it connected to a separate E26 cord base. And I did get that cord base off Amazon. And I got the grow light off Amazon as well. I feel like they're great, but I feel like your plants really need to be within like a foot to them so they're pretty far away from my pole so I don't recommend just having this one light. So having this forward light is definitely beneficial. You can see how much extra light is shining on these plants because if those weren't here it would be kind of pretty dark down there. I think I will replace that Sansi bulb and get a, another one of these grow lights or a different grow light that I'm going to show you that's pretty new to me. This one is a Halls Bright grow light and that one I did purchase off Amazon. I just think these lights do better in my experience than the Sansi bulb. So the E26 cord base screws into the grow light there. And I use these little curved hooks. A couple of these came with this cord kit and they are literally, you just like twist them into the ceiling. You don't need a stud or anything. And I have them going all the way. I have one more here and one more there, and it basically just kind of holds the cord against the wall. I do have an extension cord that's plugging into the end of this grow light cord, but it's not quite long enough, so it's a little bit curved, but nobody can really see it behind this door, so it's okay. But yeah, you can get one that's a little bit longer and then like use some cord hooks to make it kind of flush against the wall if you would like. So the lampshade is from World Market. It is very impressive, you guys. The overall size of it, it is built really well. I think it's around $70, but it was on sale for 55 recently. So I don't know if it's still on sale, but this lampshade is beautiful and I think it's, I think it's great. I would have probably paid more for it. And I am going to get a lampshade um, to put over that one. I just haven't done it yet. If I don't purchase the same one, I might get a different one. So I'm still searching, but I am gonna get a lampshade to cover that grow light. And the cord kit here I got um, on World Market with the lampshade. And you could use that one as well. That one's from Amazon. As long as you have like an E26 cord base, that'll work for the grow lights. It should work for this lampshade. So this light and that light are connected into the outlet there with those individual blink outlet timers. So those I can control from my phone. And you'll notice these white boxes throughout my room. These are cable boxes and I highly recommend them because I think they're phenomenal at hiding all the cords. It just adds a little sense of protection having all the plugs in the box and I think it just makes your space look a little bit nicer. So I highly recommend these boxes. I did get these off Amazon. And they just open up and you can see your cords in there. This is the other outlet timer I was talking about. This is by the same company with the individual ones. And these ones are really nice because you have eight plugs, but only four of them are connected to a timer. The other plugs, you can plug things into them, but you just have to manually turn your lights on and off. Or if you have a humidifier or anything that you want plugged in, just a normal plug, those would work great for. But the ones here that are all plugged in to the green light that's on, that's set up on the timer and that little dial controls the um the time so 
you just adjust it for how long that you want the lights to run for. It's a little bit tricky to figure out. If you do get one of these and you are having trouble figuring out how to work it, let me know and I can help you out. But <laughs> once you get it figured out, it's great. And so it comes on and off automatically and I don't have to do anything with it. So I have the grow light up ahead hooked into this one. I have the black cord, which is the mother light cord. And then I have two other grow lights hooked into here on the shelf beside me. So I'm basically using four of these plugs right here, but I could definitely use more of the regular plugs and add like other stuff to them. So like I was saying, so this mother light and that lamp here, that cord goes all the way down in the back there and it comes all the way down here and into there. So those two plugs. And then the other two cords are the two grow light strips on this shelf here. This long white shelf is from Overstock. I think it's like a they labeled it as a TV stand and it's phenomenal. It's the perfect size to fit under this window. And I love it. I think it's a great buy. I feel like you can fit quite a bit of plants on here because I have plants on the top row and then the middle row and then the bottom row. The lights I have under this shelf, these are strip lights by Barina. These are the T5s. And I actually have them um, secured on just with the stickers they come with. And they're pretty well like secured. But if you use these for your Ikea cabinet, they will come down if you use the stickers. But I think because there's a lot of airflow out here and it's not like super hot and intense, they don't fall down like outside of the cabinet, which is nice. And so these are lights that you actually connect into one another with these cords. These come out and then you can attach them. So I have just two lights on this shelf. I have one here. And then I have one there and they're just attached with that um, cable that they provide you. And the exact same setup is on the ones here in the bottom. I have two lights again, that one and then that one connected in the middle there. And so these, co these lights actually, the cord that it comes with, cannot connect into each other here because the space, the cord isn't long enough. I think you can purchase a longer cord that where you can connect the top row and the bottom row together so that you only use one outlet space instead of two, but I don't have a separate like longer cord. So I have these going into two separate plugs, which are in here. So that's the four lights that are contained in that box. And then my humidifier in front of me is just plugged into the wall outlet. So I'll go ahead and talk about my humidifier real quick. It's currently not on because the humidity is pretty good in here, but I love this humidifier. This is by LaVolt. This humidifier I purchased last year, but I just set it up because I haven't needed a humidifier like since moving, the humidity has been pretty good in this plant room, but I do like this one because you can set it to the humidity that you want. So like if I want it to stay 60% and then I can just turn the auto on the A and it will run out of here automatically. But since it's, it's not going to run because it's currently 77% humidity in here, which is really good. But if I take it off of auto, it'll start running. You can see it kind of misting out. And then once it starts running a bit, you can get it to really mist out of there. And this one has two different like toggles. You can kind of move it. And it does have, I think, a warm um, option here that you can change it to. And the mist level, I think, has like one, two, three. So it'll change the way the mist comes out of there. So I really like it. This has a pretty large volume tank here. And I just take it off to refill it. If I have it running 24-7, that tank will run out probably within like a full 24 to 48 hours, depending on how often it cuts on and off. But if it were to continuously run, it would probably only last a day and then you would have to refill it probably once a day. And that also probably depends on like the actual mist level that's coming out of here. But it's very quiet. I do love it about this humidifier. It's like very, very quiet. And I'm probably gonna use it all winter depending on like what the humidity is in here. 
but I think it's a great humidifier. I used some old ones that were off Amazon that were a lot smaller and I had to refill them several times a day. So it's nice that I have one that comes off and on automatically. So this one I did buy off Amazon and I will have this one linked down below as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it off since I don't need to run it today. So we talked about this shelf, we talked about the humidifier. Any of my plant stands that you see, these are, um, I think that I got at TJ Maxx, that I got at TJ Maxx. The white set here, I have one more that's in my bathroom. This white set I actually got off Amazon and it's a little, it's the smaller one that's in my bathroom holding my Maranta, but I do love these, um, shell, these plant stands here. But a lot of my baskets and stuff that you see, I did get from TJ Maxx. And along, I, this isn't really gonna be about plant pots or anything, but a lot of my plant pots I either got from TJ Maxx, I got at Target, Amazon, or like local plant shops. But I would say like 75% of my plant pots are probably from TJ Maxx, like in store. And I do have some, I think, from Lowe's as well, but most of my pots I do get at TJ Maxx. The artwork here I got from TJ Maxx earlier this year. They do have some cute artwork at TJ Maxx. If you have a TJ Maxx near you and you haven't checked it out, I actually haven't been to TJ Maxx in a really long time. I used to go a lot more before I moved, but now that I moved here, I find that I haven't been in a really long time. So I do need to go back because I do have like larger plant pots and stuff that I need to get eventually. So I'll probably make a run there at some point. So the bar up top, that is a curtain rod and it's from Target and I just spray painted it white. It used to be brown. And this one I think can extend to 88 inches and I have it supported in the middle with a bracket. So that is in studs into my wall so that it doesn't come falling down. And the little clips holding the plant pots I got, those are S hooks I got from my local hardware store. This shelf here is actually from Ikea. It's I think by the brand Lack. And I've had mine for like six or seven years and it is into like put into a stud. There's like two hooks at the top that you screw in and it is a pretty like sturdy, heavy shelf. The, um, the shelves are pretty thick on this and it's like pretty heavy. It's very, very well made. So that one is not moving. I would definitely recommend putting that into a stud because it is a very, very heavy shelf. My philodendron Brazil is attached to the wall and I have these little 3M hooks here. It came in a hundred pack, I believe. And so it's kind of concealing. You can't really make them out too much from like far away, but I think it's, they're pretty good clips to attach vines to your wall. This big shelf here is another shelf from Overstock. It is like a three tier bookshelf and the shelving units you can change and take them out. Like this is a big space here and that one is another big space. So the middle shelf I did remove just to give some room for some taller plants. So you can kind of adjust these shelves a little bit and play around with them. The light up top is a, um, it starts with an M, I forget their name, but I will put it on the screen. That one actually is a 60 watt grow light and that one I have connected into the ceiling with those little S or those little curved hooks. And that one is plugged into an extension cord and the extension cord runs down to an outlet timer, just like my other one that I showed you. So this shelf was a set of four Barina lights. And then this shelf over here, I got a set of eight Barina lights and they're both T5s. And they're two feet in length. Probably should have got the one foot. So they extend a little bit beyond the shelf if I put them just like horizontally. So I had to put them in at like a diagonal that you can see and they're hooked on with the stickers. All of these are attached into one another. So I kind of have them like kind of concealed behind the shelf. This one like goes down that way and it plugs into this one. And then the other end, it kind of goes down that way and up to this one. And I kind of like filter them all, like this one's kind of concealed. So it goes down to that one. So they're all like connected into each other. And the way that I hid the cords was by using a bunch of clear zip ties. 
you can kind of see one there. It's clear so you can't really see them. And it kind of keeps the cords contained so they're not that noticeable. So I have a light on every shelf except for that one because I don't have an extra light, which is totally fine. So they're all intertwined to one another, but I think there's one or two that are connected that are plugged in separately because I couldn't get the cord to reach, I think, because I had to redo it when I took the um, shelves out of those. And I took the lid off of this one so you can kind of see the setup here. So it's the exact same timer. And then I have, this is the extension cord for the light up ahead. And then this is a separate grow light that I will show you. And then, yeah, I have the Verena lights and two separate plugs in order for them to, I think, kind of all intertwine into one another and fit. And then I have a bunch of free cords if I need to plug anything in separately, but those ones won't be on a timer. I'll just have to like manually switch those on. But yeah, I love this outlet timer. And yeah, these boxes are really nice because you just feed the cords through the slots here in the end, and then you just put the lid on and it just contains everything. So yeah, I think that's a really great way to hide all your cords and it came in a two pack. So I think it was around $22 for a set of two. So this is one of my um, humidity readers. This one's by ThermPro. I got this one off Amazon. Now this one I don't recommend putting in the Ikea cabinet because I think it's too hot and I think it will cause this to like mess up because I had one in my cabinet that the, I think it was like, I don't know if it was like melting it in some way, but the numbers were all jumbled and you couldn't read them. So this one does fine out on my plant shelf and it tells me the humidity in the room currently, which is phenomenal. And this is the temperature in my room and it tells me the lowest temperature reading. And I think you can adjust the settings here. Like if you um, normally use Celsius, you can change that. Um, to Celsius, but I, I of course use Fahrenheit. And these are some little risers that I use to elevate some of the plants in the back up a little bit higher so that when you're looking forward, you can kind of see some of those higher ones. So these I do like, they're like acrylic little risers to elevate some plants. And I, um, I can link those down below as well, but they're cute. I think it came in a pack of six or eight, I don't quite remember now. This light is a newer light to me and I will link them here on the screen. I actually do have a discount code with them if you are interested. And so far, I've only been using it for a few weeks, but it's been doing great. It's actually prompted my Monstera to shoot out a new leaf right here. And I only have one currently, but I do want to get more because I think it's just a very good light. And it is a 15 watt, um, it's a horticultural lamp. The one thing that I really like about it is that it's very lightweight. I don't know if you have like picked up or felt these Sansi bulbs, but they're very, very bulky and they're very, very heavy. And so these little clips here, that this is an E26 base and these clips I bought in a two pack off Amazon. And so when I put the Sansi bulb in here, this metal could not support the weight of the grow light. It basically just fell right down. So yeah, those bulbs are just way too heavy for this specific lamp that I bought. And these ones are lightweight and work a lot better for these. And these I like cause they are, they're clips and you can clip it onto your shelf. But yeah, I think it's a good setup. And so far the light has worked really well for my Monsteras. I had this light for about two and a half weeks in my dining room before I switched it over to a different light light and it's prompted my monsteras to produce leaves and I will show you those out there too. And I know many of you guys know about my Ikea cabinet. That painting there, the monstera print, I got locally at a Kirkland's home store. And my cabinet, I'm not really going to run through the details of my cabinet because I made separate Ikea videos. I just wanted this to be kind of an overall general like how I set my plant room up. This little um, Monstera print is a bath mat. I got that off Amazon. And yeah, these are actually the Barina T8s. These are not the T5s that I have hanging in my shelves. The biggest thing with my cabinet setup is that I use um, these magnets to hold the lights up. I don't recommend the stickers because they will fall and melt off. And I have a couple fans that are running my cabinet and I have the lights and fans 
set up to an outlet plug here. But I don't want this video to be like super long, so I'm not gonna go like into much details, but I will link the video if you want to know more about the cabinet specifically. And then over here on the wall, this is just a frame. I think I bought this at Michael's craft store and that's the Monstera leaf that died on my Monstera elbow plant, so I framed it. And I do wanna point out that I have a ceiling fan running 24 seven in here and this controls the fan. I can do high, medium, low, and then I can turn the light off and on. So I usually keep it on low. Sometimes I turn it on medium, it just depends. So I do have it running 24 seven and I don't stop it just for airflow. It, it's just very important to have airflow in here, especially with how hot and humid it is. Mold and stuff can happen, so I try to not turn it off at all, and then I'll either keep it on low or medium. So that is it as far as my plant room and how I kind of set everything up. The, I will say the grow lights are on. I have them on currently. They run on at 10 a.m. and they shut off at 7 p.m. So that's only, 10 to seven is only nine hours, which isn't a long time. And I may adjust it depending on how the season goes. With a time change, if I feel like there's not enough light being like emitted, I will probably adjust it back. I, I was running them from like 8 a.m. to eight or 9 p.m. They were running for 12 hours but it was too much. It was like, like my plant room was getting very hot and it still gets very hot. I just don't think having a few extra hours was really like necessary. My plants are growing just fine under about nine hours of grow light time. So yeah, we'll see how that goes and kind of how this like winter season goes. So I'll show you a few other of my plant setups out there and then we'll get to ending this video. Really the only thing that I have out here is just this lamp. This was in my plant room, but I moved it out here. And that hanging tray I got off Amazon that's hanging my Mikan's plant. And a lot of these stands I either got um, at TJ Maxx or Lowe's. I think these ones I got at Walmart actually. So this light is a Sansi bulb, which I want to replace it with one of the other ones because again, I'm just not that much of a fan of the Sansi bulbs, but my Monsteras are growing towards the light. They are leaning towards it, but these new leaves were actually grown out of the other light because I just switched it when I rearranged my plant room. But I have two new Monstera leaves here that were pushed out from being under the other light. But yeah, I just kind of wanted to show you, I do have some light and this is on from the same time, about nine hours. And this is an east window that gets some light. And then I'm gonna be moving a lot of these plants back outside. This is my other setup I just wanted to show you real quick. So this is one of my older humidifiers. I don't have it running right now, but I'll have to refill it probably a couple times during the day whenever it's running full blast. And I have a cheaper grow light here off Amazon. It's pretty old. I had it at the old house, but the light is on a timer. And then once it, the humidity drops in here, I will turn that humidifier on. But I have some of my like um, Tenanthes and Marantas in here just to get a little bit of light. This is north facing, so it's not bright at all. And so this is just providing a little extra light and I'm just gonna house these here over winter. Look at these cute cats, you guys. I'm gonna move this so you guys can see them. Look at them just laying in the sun. Oh, she sees my, my camera movement now. <laughs> But thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions about anything that I've used, or if you want links to a specific item, definitely let me know. I'm gonna try and have as much as I can linked down in that little description box. But if there's something specific you're wanting, just let me know and I'll send you a link to it. So yeah, this is my current setup. I think the biggest thing, the biggest improvement in me and my space has definitely been the addition of like great grow lights. I definitely recommend the Barina lights. I think they're great. And I definitely recommend some other grow bulbs. I think just adding more light in general is just really helpful and beneficial for your plants. And yeah, if you don't have a humidifier, I definitely recommend the LeBolt one. I've used it a few times now and I think it's a great humidifier and I'm excited to use this over winter. So if you have any questions, definitely let me know. And thank you guys so much for watching and being here. And I hope you enjoyed my setup. And yeah, I will talk to you all soon.